Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More, and I'm back from vacation, and I can finally talk about the NAR settlement that so many people have been talking about. NAR is a National Association of Realtors. I am a realtor. Um, I'm a real estate agent. A lot of people are saying it's going to have a huge impact on the industry, like headlines like this to say the 6% commission on buying or selling a home is gone. And there's a lot of confusion about this as well. So I want to talk about this as an agent, as a broker, as an investor, as a realtor, and talk about how a lot of these headlines are misleading, how a lot of the conversation about this is misleading, and how a lot of people don't even know what this is going to do yet. But I think a lot of people are overestimating what it will do, even if it does do those things. I know that sounds really confusing, but that's exactly how all of this is. It is very, very confusing. So the first thing I want to talk about is realtor versus real estate agent, because that is very important in this. NAR, like I said, is a national association of realtors. Um, not every real estate agent is a realtor. There's a difference. So a real estate agent is someone who's licensed by the state they re do business in, they don't have to live there, and they can sell real estate, you know, they can help sellers, help buyers complete a real estate transaction. They take education, they pass a test, the state says, hey, you have the ability to represent a buyer or seller as a real estate agent. Well, realtor is like a union. It's like a, a club that real estate agents belong to. And then you can pay more money, take an ethics class, um, abide by some other rules. That some of my quarters fell down, sorry. <laughs> abide by some of the other rules that the realtor association has. But realtors are not everyone. That's why this settlement is so weird because this settlement is between the National Association of Realtors and the lawyers that sued the National Association of Realtors and brought this lawsuit forth. And what's very, very weird to me, and maybe some people who are experts on this can chime in below in the comments and let me know, every state has their own laws or regulations that they have formed over decades of having their lawyers um, their real estate commissions their boards come up with how real estate transactions should be done how it should be the most fair to buyers and sellers how to handle um, commissions all of these different things buyers buyer agency agreements and then this settlement that's not even between lawmakers or the government or even the real estate commissions is between a, a trade group changes the laws for everybody and that, that's what is so confusing to me on how that happens like if i want to change a law that i don't like can i just get together with a lawyer have him sue me we say okay we're gonna settle it this is how we're changing the laws because we settled it in court let's go <laughs> we just changed the law that's what's weird to me. I know a judge has to approve this, but even then, can a judge approving this court case, which was, I think, in, was it Missouri, change the laws for every state? It, it, it's, it's very tricky and very um, confusing to me on how that's all going to work. So that's the first thing I want to bring up is that I don't know how this case can be a broad overage on all real estate agents and state laws, especially because, like I said, NAR is not all real estate agents. If you are not a realtor, you don't, you aren't part of this settlement. In fact, there's, we'll, we'll pull this up right here, 94 brokerages left out of this settlement. This isn't even for all brokerages that are realtors. So if a brokerage has more than $2 billion in sales volume, they were left out of this settlement. So that's what's strange to me in the beginning is how they're going to implement this, how they're going to enforce this, how is this actually going to um, change state law and how you're going to decide who's part of it, who's not part of it. Um, there's so many different things going on. Um, but let's talk about what actually happened in this settlement. So here's an article on CNN. I just chose it because it's one of the first ones that popped up. The 6% commission on buying or selling a home is gone after a Realtors Association agrees to seismic settlement. So again, it's just the Realtors who agreed to this, not all agents. But a 6% commission was never even really discussed in this settlement ever. So a lot of these um, headlines that say a 6% commission is gone and commissions are changing forever, 
it isn't even part of the settlement. It's it's media overblowing it, making scary headlines like they do on everything now. And uh, you really have to dig into the settlement and what it means to see what's actually going to happen. And this article goes into how you can see this in our, which represents more than one million realtors. I think there's 1.7 million real estate agents. I could be wrong there. Um, agreed to put in place a new set of rules. One prohibits agents' compensation from being included on listed listings placed on local centralized listing portals known as multiple listing services. So what does that mean? So I'm a, as a real estate agent, I have access to my local MLS, multiple listing service. So as a realtor or real estate agent, if I have access to this MLS, I have to pay a fee to use it. I can input listings, which means if I find a seller who wants to sell a house, I say, hey, I want to use you as my real estate agent. We sign a contract. I say, hey, I'm going to put this on the MLS. I input pictures, information, data onto the MLS. Then other agents can see that those listings, if they have buyers, they can send them to their buyers. And then most MLSs also share their listings with online portals like Zillow, Redfin, uh, Realtor.com. Ironically, Realtor.com is not associated with the National Association of Realtors. <laughs> the National Association of Realtors sold that website a while ago, so they're not the same thing. I know it's very confusing. Um, so by putting in the MLS, we're... we're letting other people know what the house is, what the price is, and usually a co-op commission is listed on that MLS listing. So it could say, you know, offering a 2.5% commission or a 3% commission to a, another agent. And the thing is, every state is different with how they have laws, and some have transaction brokers like Colorado. We have also have buyer's agents. Other places have, you know, brokers, all kinds of different words and sayings and in, in, in different um, titles for agents and how they transact with the public. Well, the lawsuit basically said it wasn't fair that the MLS said we would pay another broker. So typically in a real estate transaction, you have a listing agent who lists the house for the seller, gets pictures, um, a listing description, maybe helps them decide what to, how to stage it, helps them come up with a price, gets the paperwork ready, helps them do the disclosure, all kinds of different things to list the property. And then you have a buyer's agent. Typically, typically they're different from the selling agent. They're not the same agent. And they represent the buyer and help them write a contract, help them do inspection, appraisal, maybe find a lender, um, negotiate, all kinds of different things on that side of it as well. And so you have the listing agent and the buyer's agent. And then typically, it's hard for me, you got to be so careful as an agent on what you say. But <laughs> in a lot of cases, the seller will pay for both agents' commission. Now, there has never, ever been a standard commission. There has never been a typical commission. There has never had anything to do with typical standard commission used in NAR for real estate agents ever. In fact, when I first became an agent 20 years ago, I remember one of my first classes I had to take, they drill it into your head over and over again. There are no standard commissions. There's not a 6% commission. There's not a 3% commission for each side. Everything is negotiable. And they even went as far as to say, if you ever hear someone say a typical commission, standard commission, this is the only commission we charge, something like that, you stand up, throw the table you're sitting at and say, I am not a part of this conversation. I do not agree with this. I am leaving. So you make as big of a spectacle as you can so that everybody there knows you're not a part of it. You are not part of that discussion about typical standard commissions, anything like that. It's been drilled into all of our heads as long as I can, anyone in the business can remember that there's no typical or standard commissions. And my office, I own a brokerage, have different commissions all the time. We charge buyers different, sellers different. We've negotiated on many different things. But typically, like I was getting at before, the seller will pay for both commissions. The seller might offer six or five or four or seven or 12. Who knows? HUD, a, a federal agency that sells houses, you might recognize you know, HUD Homes, their government foreclosures, offers commissions too. They offer up to a 3% for the buyer's agent who's buying properties um, on the HUD portal representing a buyer, sorry, the agents representing buyers. They also offer their listing agents 
3% commission, at least last time I checked. Now, does HUD negotiate? The buyer can choose up to 3% and any number below that that they want to get paid so they can negotiate. HUD pretty much says the listing agent's getting 3%. That's what you're getting, at least last time. I used to be a HUD broker. At least when I was a HUD broker, that's what it was. So there's lots of different things. There's lots of different structures, lots of different ways agents are paid. But the lawsuit said it was unfair that sellers had to pay buyer's agents because basically it said that sellers feel they had to offer at least two and a half percent or three percent to a buyer's agent for buyer's agents to view properties or to show it to their buyers, which maybe they felt that way. But again, there's never ever been a standard commission, never any requirement, no rules put in place that said a buyer can't show a home or a buyer's agent can't show a home with any commission offered or even no commission offered. And in fact, if a buyer's agent has an agreement with their buyer, a lot of times they'll have it written into the agreement. If I'm not getting two and a half percent or or a three percent or two percent or some figure they negotiate with their buyer because you can negotiate, they will say, well, the buyer will owe me the difference. So if I say, hey, you have to pay me at least two percent if we find a property you like and you find a listing that's offering one percent, then the buyer's agent can go to their buyer and say, hey, our agreement says if it's at least 2% or higher, you don't have to pay me anything. The seller will take care of it. But if it's below that, you have to make up the difference. This listing is offering 1%. The difference is another 1%. Are you okay paying me that if we go look at this property? And this buyer can say, sure, I'm fine doing that. Or no, I don't want to. Let's not look at it. That's basically how it's worked with buyer's agreements, with buyer's agency. And like I said, it's all been negotiable. So a lot of ideas in this lawsuit and this idea that real estate agents have this monopoly and the standard commissions have never been what I've witnessed as an agent. And it's never been what I've viewed as a real estate investor and someone who's had YouTube videos and talked to investors and agents all across the country. And so one thing we can look at too is this is a cool site, clever.com. I can't vouch for their data. I haven't researched it and double checked all of it, but their listing average real estate agent commission rates in 2024. And they did a survey to see what the commissions were in different states. Again, I can't vouch for this, but it seems to be pretty accurate with what I would see in Colorado. So what this shows is most states are well below 6%. Um, Colorado's 5.62, Utah 4.9, California 5.11, Florida's 5.3, Texas 5.7, and there's a few states that are higher. Wyoming's at 6, Alaska 6, Mississippi 6.07, Kentucky 6, West Virginia 6.67. So you can see none of the states have the same commission rate because we have different laws, properties, number of agents, and those rates have been negotiable. Now, why are these states higher? I don't know if it's because there's lower price properties. I don't know if it's because there's fewer agents and there's less competition. It could be a number of reasons. Now, some of the states with lower commissions do have very expensive properties, but not all of them, right? No, North Dakota is five, one of the lowest, and, and does not have super high um, price properties. So it's hard to say why these differ, but you know the number of agents, What's that tiny one? I can't tell. <laughs> um, properties are so many different variables that go into it. So what did this settlement actually do? What happened? Well, this is straight from NAR. Um, the National Association of Realtors announced an agreement that would end litigation claims brought on behalf of home sellers related to broker commissions. The agreement would resolve claims against NAR, over 1 million NAR members, all state, territorial, and local realtor associations, all association-owned MLSs, and all brokerages with an NAR member as principal that had a residential transaction volume in 2022 of 2 billion or below. Now, they're agreeing to pay 418 million over four years. I'm sure the lawyers will probably end up getting most of that money. I'm not sure how they're gonna you know, dole that out to home sellers and how um, that all is going to work out. But the thing that's very interesting too is, you know, this doesn't cover all MLS systems, as we said before. It doesn't cover all agents. It doesn't even cover all realtors. And the weird thing too, I, I talked about that, how that's weird, 
it says it will um let me see i want to find the exact wording uh sorry Two critical achievements of this resolution are the release of most NAR members and many industry stakeholders from liability in these matters and the fact that cooperative compensation remains a choice for consumers when buying or selling a home. They're saying the settlement will release these people from liability. That's something else that maybe some lawyers or people who know more about this can chime in on. How does this settlement release realtors from any future liability regarding commissions in this matter like how does this one court case automatically make it so nobody else can ever sue them like isn't that is that how our system works where if you settle one case all the other cases just have to disappear and and don't exist anymore like that doesn't make sense to me i don't know how that works it doesn't seem logical so maybe someone else can help me out on if is, is that how it really happens, or is there still, I mean, who's to say that Alaska couldn't come and sue NAR next year, or the Department of Justice couldn't sue them, or Joe Smith down the street can't sue them either? Can he, I mean, what if Joe Smith thinks he got, you know, worked over on a commission and, and someone didn't disclose everything to him right, and he says, hey, I'm going to sue my local realtor board. They're going to say, nope, you can't sue him. We settled this three years ago. Like, wait a second, <laughs> how's that work? So maybe someone can help me out there. But the, the two main things that um, NAR agreed to, besides all the money, uh, they're enacting a new rule that would require MLS participants working with buyers to enter into written agreements with their buyers. NAR continues as it has done to encourage its members to use buyer brokerage agreements, which it has. All agents are encouraged to, to sign up their any buyers before they show them a house to a broker agreement, which I talked about earlier, which talks about what the broker does, the commissions they might get paid, all of that. Um, but this is saying they want every single buyer before they see any property with an agent to sign that agreement. So it's going to be way more work and force buyers to choose an agent before they even know them, uh, maybe want to sign an agreement. It's really going to put buyers in a tricky position, in my opinion. And what is this? I mean, are they going to be switching agents all the time? Are they going to have multiple buyer agency agreements signed out there? That's a really tricky one. I'm not sure exactly what it does, except really lock in buyers to agents much more than they are now. I thought we were supposed to be helping the consumer not hurt them. Uh, In Colorado, you can have a transaction broker who kind of helps both sides come together, but they're not actually advocating for either side. A lot of buyers will be transaction, um, you know, deal with an agent as a transaction broker until they decide, hey, I want to work with this agent all the way. I want to sign an agreement. Um, Lots of houses are shown now without any kind of signed agreements. They want that to change. But again, it's only changing with realtors, not other agents. So how is that all going to work? And the other big change... Um, NAR has agreed to put into place a new MLS rule prohibiting offers of broker compensation on the MLS. This would mean that offers of broker compensation could not be communicated via the MLS, but they could continue to be an option consumers can pursue off MLS through negotiation and consultation with real estate professionals. So all this talk about commissions coming down and the settlement reducing commissions, it didn't do any of that. Right. In fact, if you if NAR had agreed to reduce commissions, that would be price fixing. That would be agreeing to typical commissions. That would be you know doing the things that everyone's accusing them of doing. But all this does is say that in the MLS systems, they're owned by realtors. You can't list a co-op commission or what the seller might pay the buyer. This the agent can call up the the broker and tell them. The agent can put it on their website and list it. I think Zillow or Realtor.com, if they're not owned by realtors, can list it on there. It just can't be on the MLS. That's it. So this massive change that we're seeing isn't really changing anything except buyers have to sign an agreement now, which they didn't have to before, and the commission can't be listed on the MLS. They can still pay a commission. Sellers can still pay it. They can still negotiate it. They can still offer it. They just can't offer it on the MLS, which means that buyers have to figure out where it's at, talk to them directly, you know, bring another step into the process and bring a lot of confusion and possible you know, financial responsibility onto the buyers they did not have before. So if this 
makes sellers think they don't have to pay a commission now, which it, it could from all the headlines, that will make buyers pay that commission. The reason buyers don't pay commissions now in most cases is because they don't have the money to pay commissions. They're paying closing costs, down payment, all these other fees, and the system has been set up so that the seller pays for the buyer's commission out of their proceeds because it allows the buyer to buy their house because they don't have to shell out more money for the commission and they can put that money into the house instead of paying their agent. Now, if the buyer has to pay that commission directly, which this doesn't do, but in theory, that's what they wanted it to do. If that did happen, it would mean many, much fewer buyers could buy houses. There would be fewer buyers, home ownership would be much harder, it'd be much more difficult for first time home buyers, for people to get into the market. Would sellers make more money? maybe on a transaction or two where they don't have to pay an agent. But if there's fewer buyers and not as people, many people buying houses, then it's gonna be harder to sell houses as well. And really, if this settlement had done what the media and maybe what the lawsuit wanted it to do, it could have seriously hurt the real estate market for everybody. Uh, not just realtors, but make it harder and more expensive on buyers, make it harder to sell your house as sellers. Maybe you're selling houses for less money. And you think, oh, well, if houses are selling for less money, then the buyers come out ahead. Well, not if they can't buy them, not if they don't have the down payment because they're paying their realtor. And if a house sells for $5,000 less, it's not like the buyer has $5,000 cash now that they didn't have before because they're financing most of that, that deal. So it's just that they just can't buy it. So thankfully, this settlement I don't think is doing what so many people think it's doing. It's still gonna make things foggy and tricky and weird. Um, and I don't know how it's going to actually be implemented for just realtors and not others and how they're gonna change state laws based on the National Association of Realtors and Lawyers figuring out what state law should be. Don't know how any of that's gonna work. But I wouldn't freak out about it. I wouldn't think the whole industry is going to change. I wouldn't get super excited if you want realtors to disappear and not make any money. I don't think any of that's going to happen. I think it will might not even be approved by the courts. Who knows? Because the court might say, hey, I can't change state laws <laughs> and how the industry works in each state based on this settlement. So we'll see how it all plays out. It's not set in stone. There's a whole lot of questions to be answered. If you list your questions below, I'll try to answer them. Um, I've been kind of, well, we've all been warned by the Realtor Association and real estate commissions not to talk about this, not to say too much, because we could get in trouble for discussing commissions and different things. But like I said, all commissions have been negotiable since as long as I've been doing it. I've never had anyone you know, tell me, this is the standard commission, this is what we always charge. My office has never done that. We've always given a lot of flexibility to buyers and sellers and negotiated all the time. So we'll see how it all works out and how it plays out. But uh, that's what I've got for right now. All right, thanks for watching. Of course, we'll have more videos on my investment properties, flips, rentals, commercial properties, businesses like laundromats and different things coming up as well. And um, stay tuned for any updates on this.